it really bothered him that he struggled with this. So, you know, I was like, okay, well, we're going to go to the Lord about it. And we prayed and we cried and everything. So it was good. But I don't think at first I really understood just the hold it had on him. Because when that person dies or miss it, you know, then you're screwed. You don't have a spouse. Hi friends, it's Brittany Valadez here from BravelyDaily.com. I'm so excited for you guys to be joining me because I have a special guest with me today. Yes, I have the wonderful, the beautiful, the amazing couple, Jalen and Casey. If you guys haven't heard about them, you're going to be obsessed with them by the end of this video and if not by the end of the series because they are fantastic. So Jalen and Casey actually became popular because um, it all began with one particular video and then the Jalen and Casey stories blew up. And that is what their ministry is about now, catering to godly marriages. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Now, you guys, follow me on social media. I will list my social media accounts in the description box below. All right, let's get into this interview. Now, Casey, you guys spoke about your reaction when Jalen came and talked to you about his porn struggle. Your reaction was very mature. I feel like many women, their knee-jerk reaction would be to either cry and maybe yell and scream, and some may even be like, get out of here, you're disgusting. And then you have others who may just shut down completely. What advice would you give to the woman or the girl whose boyfriend or spouse is coming with them and coming to them and acknowledging they have this struggle? Yeah, I mean, that that's a real concern. That's a really good question. Um, I had to come to a point where I really understood what he was dealing with. Because at first when he told me about it, you know, I was like, okay, it didn't shock me because, you know, I it happens a lot, right? And so I wasn't going to condemn him for it, you know, because again, I knew who he was. I knew he was just a person that was just like, you know, haphazardly do things. And it really bothered him that he struggled with this. So, you know, I was like, okay, well, we're going to go to the Lord about it. and. We prayed and we cried and everything, so it was good. But I don't think at first I really understood just the hold it had on him until further along. And, you know, he would always come to me and say, you know, babe, you know, this happened or whatever. And I'd be like annoyed. But again, I forgive you. I love you. I'm in this so far. And I remember one time he came to me and he told me that, you know, he had watched porn. And I got really mad. I was like, okay, I, I'm not understanding. Why is it so hard for you to quit? Like, am I not enough, you know? And yes, you will get challenged with that feeling of, I'm not enough. You're looking at all these other women. I don't look like them, okay? So now the devil's playing on my insecurities. And just, you know, like, why can't you be faithful to me? Why am I not enough? All these things. And so, yeah, that's a real fear that will crop up. And I got angry for a minute because I just felt like it should be easy for you to cut this off. But I had to learn from the Lord as well. And as he began to explain to me, it's not just something you just cut off and just be done with. Like it was a real spiritual struggle. So now I had to change my tactic. You know, I'm not going to get angry with him. I had to forgive him and had the Lord, the Lord had to really show me him. And we have, as women, the ability to intercede for our husband in a way that nobody else can. It's nothing like the power of an intercessor and they're your wife. <laughs> like, the devil's going to lose for sure. So I had to begin to pray for him, even unbeknownst to him, in a way for him. And I can remember, long story short, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, give my husband a Jesus experience that will break this. So I don't care how, when, where, have, let him have this experience. I know it's the love of God that's going to flush all of this out of him. And it happened in the most strangest way. <laughs> Do you want to say when, how it happened? Oh, yeah. I was uh, actually, I was, in, I was in the bathroom. Yeah. Before, it was random. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected. It was, it was on a weekend and I'm in bed. He's in the bathroom and he comes out. And he just was bawling. He was crying. And he had that experience in the bathroom. And I'm just rejoicing. I'm like, well, praise God. Like, literally flush that stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I had to be patient, you know? And this is where God can develop you as a wife during this process. Because it's not going to be an over... And for some, it may be. I'm not going to say it's not an overnight thing. 
For some, it may be an overnight deliverance, but for some, it may be a, a journey of walking it out, your salvation in this area. So I had to be patient with him. And the one thing I can say, he was always honest. He was open. He found um, accountability. He began to talk to his father mm -hmm. and be open to him about it. And um, I loved him. And the Lord just really showed me his heart and gave me love for him. And I promise you, I'm not mad. If he ever came to me and was like, this happened, I wouldn't be mad because the devil lost already. In my, in my, where I stand, the devil's already lost. And um, so it really an opportunity for the wife to grow and develop as well and walk this out. And um, so he's delivered from this. And I'm so thankful for that. But I, we would never say that it won't be a challenge again because the devil is the devil. He's always yeah. going to still try. So we put up boundaries. We, exactly. You got to be, be very strict. can't ever get lapsed in this. I don't care how strong the Lord you are. I don't care how many people you have want to the Lord. You are still human. We're in these bodies and don't give the devil access in no kind of way. Yeah. So we're very open. We have access to each other's accounts. From, and I trust him. Like, I'm not going to hover over him. Mm -hmm. I told him, I don't want to be that person. I got to hover over you every single time, you know, but we are very open. We don't hide stuff from each other. And um, so that really helped. Yeah. And I want to say this about deliverance, you know, deliverance is instant in the moment you receive it. Yeah. And then, but then the process of renewing your mind is a forever thing. Yeah. And so I had to receive deliverance and I had a lot of challenging conversations with the Lord where I realized that it was me that was resisting. Yeah. It wasn't anything on God. I was waiting for God to come save me. He saved me 2000 years ago. The issue was me and my receiving that deliverance because I wanted to hang on to that bondage. And um, so I want to say this to, to wives and to women, you know, you, you have this idea of I got to be the suffering wife for my man It's all doing things. Well, ho hopefully you are indeed married to a man. And the one thing I have to, I have to pat myself on the back, I was penitent, you know, I, I, I was desiring change and I was being honest with you. If you're in a situation where that's not happening necessarily, then that may be an entirely different conversation. You may not be dealing with a man that ever had any intention of being faithful, you know. Um, Cause some men don't see it as a problem. Yeah. Unfortunately, some women don't see it as a problem. Some people have the mentality, well, at least it's not, sleeping with somebody else yeah. outside and on the inside we can deal with it you know but one thing i want to tell women is that don't take the burden on on yourself it's not yeah. you yeah. you're not the mm -hmm. problem because i didn't think that i was the problem like maybe i'm not giving him enough love maybe i'm not giving him enough attention you know i'm not doing things that he wants you know and we try to play that role that he's watching all the time and that's not what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. it's not you trust me it's not, it's not. you and um, it's, it's an issue that he has to deal with. Yeah, him. and I want that was the thing I wanted to say. I'm yeah. glad you said it. Don't make it about you. So when you go into prayer and say things like that, you're, what you're praying for is that Jesus knocking Saul off his donkey on the road to Tarsus. That's what you're on the uh, road to Damascus. That's what you're looking for. That's what you want to happen to him. However harsh it has to be, yeah. that's what needs to happen. But don't make it about you. It's not you. It's not, well, God, you got to pick things like that. Yes, there are always ways you can serve your spouse better. Always look for, in every situation, what you can do to submit and be a better spouse unto your spouse. Every spouse, husband and wife should always do that. But when a situation like this, that's not going to be what fixes it. Yeah. Now, your love unto him can open the door, just like Stephen's love opened the door to Saul getting saved. That you, your love can open the door, but you're not the one that's going to fix it. Jesus yeah. has to fix it. And so you prayed for the right thing that time. And that's what broke it. And that's what opened the door. And the Lord got to me. Because I don't care how much sex you have. If that's a brokenness in him, that's not going to fix it. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can. So you can't fix your spouse. Don't ever try to. I had to really give him over to the Lord and say, Lord, I give Jalen over to you. You created him. You know how he's wired and you know what's going to fix him. And I had to walk in love towards him. And no, I didn't tolerate it. You know, it wasn't like, okay, you do what you want to do. No, we put up boundaries and mm -hmm. accountability, something like that. And we, I held him accountable to things. But um, I had to let, I had to release him. Because as long as I was stressing out over it and being mad and angry, God could not get involved. Somebody had to stand, you know, and pray and intercede and let God do what he was going to do. And it broke. And we're free from that today. And we're still walking out our salvation always. And we're very vigilant about how we um, keep our marriage safe. Yeah. 
from those types of things. Yep. Now, Jalen, when you came and told Casey about your struggles, she actually responded very maturely. Did that kind of scare you at first because you were going and you were, you were repenting of what you were doing? And were you thinking, wait, you're not supposed to just forgive me so easily. This is a, an issue I'm dealing with, blah, 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 blah. Or like, what was your response to that? I knew her personality and she's very much like her father. And her father was good for that, for loving you no matter what. I knew that she wouldn't cast me out. Um, uh, she had to be careful with that because sometimes you can try to take it for granted when you have that mentality. So, no, I, it didn't me out because I knew her. her she, she's that even tempered kind of person. She's not that person. When she commits something, she's in it for life, you know? So I knew that about her. And that's just always been her personality from probably she's a little kid, honestly. So I don't think anything to do with her age per se, but that's just who she is as a person. I'm loyal to a fault. And really, <laughs> and I mean, again, it's not, I don't say that privately, but if I commit to being your friend, your family, whatever, I'm there, whether you love me or not, I'm going to be there. Like I love people and I know, I know I love him. And like he was talking before, God had given me a vision about him to me. Like I saw him as my husband. I saw who he's going to be in the future. And that's the vision I hang on to. Even when things are not looking good, I hold on to that vision for God gave that to me. So even though he was doing all this stuff, I saw the man that God called him to be. And so he's now walking in that and there's more to come. Um, so I had to, you got to have that vision. That's why it's important. When you get married, ask God, or before getting married, ask the Lord to show you that mm -hmm. person so that that can be your your map, for lack of a better term. That can be your guide when things are not going the way they're su supposed to be, I guess, in that moment. Because marriage has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have issues. There were issues I had. I didn't even know I had until I got married. Because marriage will bring out the good, the bad, and the ugly. And sometimes all at one time. <laughs> And so you need that vision of each other. And that's what I hung on to when he was dealing with this. And I still hang on that to this day. And uh, our marriage is so much stronger than day one because we're just so vigilant about being friends. We protect our friendship and mm -hmm. we stay open and communicate with one another all the yep. time. And it's hard sometimes. Trust me, it is, it's not always easy, but it's so worth it. You know, if you believe God put you together, it's worth it to fight, always fight for your marriage. I think to women, I want to say this because it, it, not just pornography, but even men, you know, looking at the women. One thing I want to tell women, never ever think again, it's your responsibility to keep your husband's loyalty. That is always his responsibility. But there's something to learn here. Again, I, it was a quote, I was, I was reading a book and there was a topic about pornography in it. It was a Christian book. And there was a man who was a pastor who made a statement. He said, not every man who is a Christian or even man really is using pornography like a drug. But every man, but there's never a man who's seen it who didn't like what he saw. And there's a the lesson there because what you got to understand, wife, and the power that you have is, and this isn't the only in situations where your man's being disloyal and things like that, but just understand the power of the visual and understand that you have all the ability as a wife to attract your husband to you. I don't care. You're, you forget trying to compete with a girl who's got a different body type or whatever like that. That really doesn't matter as much to men as the world makes you think. What a man is looking for, and this is a free advice that almost goes off in a different direction, but what a man is looking for is a woman that's interested in him. And that's why pornography is so attractive because he thinks all these women are interested in him because they don't say no. So a wife who understands that visual power and understands what that man is looking for, has all the ability to keep her husband attracted to her. Now, again, is entirely within his ability and his power to decide whether or not he's going to be a loyal and a faithful man like he vowed when he married you. And if he's making a decision not to do that, there's nothing you can do about that. That is that's that is what he has decided to do as his own person. He's got to answer to God for that. But understand the power that you have, that woman, you are beautiful. And when the first woman was presented to the first man, that compatibility is a, is a biological thing. So when y'all are married, that's your man. And you're his woman. So and you, you have all the ability why, to I can't understand why they've worked so hard yeah. to attack marriage. Yeah. You got the man over here yeah. addicted to porn. You got the woman over here insecure about yeah. herself. So she's not building herself up. She's not presenting herself up so that he can want and desire her. Because she's so, you know, shuttered in because I don't I'm not beautiful. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too whatever your issue is. And he's over here. So 
it doubles, you know, yeah. he just playing both hands against the middle. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why we're so passionate about marriage because marriage is a foundation for a successful society. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, the society is falling apart because we're trying to redefine marriage and what it is. And so we're just so passionate about that. And I'm so grateful for the assignment God has given us. We don't take it lightly whatsoever. We just love seeing people um, delivered. We've had many friends and family who just walked this journey out and we've seen their marriage flourish. And it's so encouraging. So we believe in marriage. We believe that no matter where you come from and how you got to it, God can restore. He, he can deliver. He can recover, whatever it is. But if you have the opportunity to start out right, yeah. <laughs> start, out right. start out right. Don't squander it because it makes a world of difference. All right. So I'm sure that many of you are loving the wisdom dropped by Jalen and Casey. But was there anything specific that stood out to you? Was there like a quotable quote that you just can't get out of your head and maybe you even like wrote it down because it was so good? Just tell me in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure they'll be interested to know what inspired you. But I just want to tell you um, a couple more things. So yes, remember, don't forget, this is not the only video in this series. There aren't many more to come. So you guys have gotten to know Jalen and Casey because of their wisdom when it comes to dating, relationships, and marriage. That wisdom we can all receive when we study and apply the Word of God to our lives as well. But there's another topic that they're really wise on, and it comes down to the topic of race. So Jalen actually did an amazing series on his YouTube channel with his father where he discussed race. If you guys haven't noticed, we are minorities ourselves. I'm Hispanic and they are African American. So we thought, well, we might have a thing or two to say about, you know, the topic of race, but it's not because we are minorities that we feel that we need to talk about race. That's just one major aspect. The first major aspect of why we are even talking about it is because we want to share it from a biblical perspective. Race relations is huge right now but what are true authentic Christians saying about it and if you're kind of somewhere in between and don't know what to believe or what to think about it I think you should definitely watch the series so I hope you guys you know can stay on this channel I'll let you guys know on social media etc when that video series is coming out lastly if you like them and I know you did you're gonna want to follow them on social media I will put all of their social accounts in the description box below Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Jalen and Casey, and go visit their website, jalenandcasey.com. Our YouTube channel, and I'm sure Brittany's already linking all of that, but youtube.com slash Jalen and Casey. We'd love it if you would join our Bible study group that we have on Facebook. It's a private group, so just ask to be in it, um, and then you get accepted into it. And um, we're actually launching pretty soon some uh, new Bible studies that'll happen. Well, I'm not going to give too much detail until we actually lock it in, but it's going to be happening. So go ahead and join our Bible study group. And uh, on our website, if you have questions for us, we have uh, our dear Jalen and Casey tab, where you can submit questions. You can be anonymous if you like. And that's or, at Jalen and Casey.com. Yeah, Jalen and Or you can always send them to Brittany and she'll just have us back on again. We'll just do this all over. <laughs> um, <laughs> or uh, we also have, uh, we're doing for the year of 2021. For only $21, you can have a one-on-one session with us, a 30-minute session on Zoom, and you can ask us questions directly, talk about your situation, whether it's you with your uh, person, your spouse, the person you're dating, or you single by yourself, uh, wherever you are, single, divorced, married, struggling, uh, on a pathway to struggling, whatever it is you're dealing with, and you need to get some help. When you could talk one-on-one, you can do that. And for the year of 2021, we're just doing it for $21 because we're passionate about this year, people getting their lives on track and whatever they're dealing with. So that's what we've got going on right now. So be sure to check all that out. And we're everywhere on Instagram too. Yeah, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Just look, in case you see everything, we got it. Just spell the name right, it's all it's important. (laughs) Also, if you guys want to follow me, my social media accounts will be in the description box below. You can also subscribe to my channel and you can follow me on my website at bravelydaily.com. All right, I'm Brittany Valadez for bravelydaily.com. God bless and I'll see you in the next one. This one.